You're listening to the Hurdy Gurdy Travel Podcast. I'm your host, Justin Vakula, here to help you travel the world at next to no cost through credit card points, miles, benefits, and rewards. Welcome, new podcast listeners, and thanks to patrons for supporting my work. Please share this and other episodes with friends and reach out to me if you have questions. This is episode eight with special guest David Moss, the Amex King, who joins me to talk about the benefits of, you guessed it, American Express, among other related topics, like how to start with travel credit cards and how to benefit from loyalty programs like Delta Sky Miles and Hilton Honors. I met the Amex King while he was traveling in Philadelphia, my first live recording using a Sony voice recorder. Please excuse the slight echo and general audio quality, but do enjoy the benefits of a more intimate face-to-face discussion. Learn how to get started with travel credit cards, maximize your spend, save money, and make money. Find David on his YouTube channel, David Amex King Moss, and within the Travel Explore Click community, as he is a regular participant in live streams on YouTube and in the Travel Explore Click WhatsApp group. Look forward also to future episode with Travel Explore Click himself. On to the discussion. All right, here with the Amex King himself, David Moss, at the Hilton Curio Collection in Logan Square, Philadelphia. We're here in some sort of library room. There's a pool table and some books. <laughs> Hopefully, uh, no one just walks in and interrupts us. Thanks for joining me. Yeah, thanks for having me, Justin. What brings you out to Philadelphia today? Uh, just a nice family vacation. So, I figured out that I had a Hilton Expire weekend night, and so did my father. So, we um, came for the weekend, and then the Seahawks happen to be playing the Eagles this weekend, so it was either we're going to le- use the Knights or lose them. So yeah, <laughs> so, so use them, and then oh, that works really well. And I would think that the hotel rates, the cash rates, would be really expensive here in the city, huh? Yeah, it was about uh, two fifty or so for Friday night, and then about five six hundred for some reason on Saturday. So good, yeah. pretty good value. And then um, paying cash for Sunday was only about one thirty or so. So yeah, it came out pretty pretty well ahead. More, more than the annual fee. Yeah. yeah, a lot of people are afraid of annual fees. Oh, I don't want to spend this money, and I'd rather a no annual fee card. But look, you got the the free night certificate. That's a two fifty value there. Maybe you wouldn't pay two fifty. Maybe you'd spend like a hundred or hundred fifty. But all the other benefits, the card, the bonus points, the free breakfast here, right? Yeah, yeah, the points, the breakfast, a little bit of everything. The cards with the annual fee are the ones that are the best. Yeah, I see it as a good upfront investment that, okay, I'm willing to put up this money now and I'm going to get the returns later. Yeah, if if you're really interested in traveling, yeah, that's a great way to look at it. more you're going to spend the money anyway, so you might as well get a return. Yeah, we're talking about the no annual fee card, the Hilton no annual fee card, but that's what, 100,000 point sign-up bonus categories and that's about it, right? Yeah, and it doesn't even earn that well. I think it's like 6 or 8x. On Hilton, you can get more on Sapphire Reserve. Very good. And the flight over here, how did you go about booking the flight? What kind of points do you use for that? Um, Use Sky Miles. So just um, flew first class, flew into Detroit, and then about a 90-minute layover. Nice. And you got that through the Delta Reserve card or otherwise transferring MR? Yeah, through Delta Reserve. That's the membership rewards for listeners. <laughs> yeah. Try to avoid some of the lingo here for uh, especially beginners. So that's another card with a high annual fee that you're happy to pay because you're definitely getting the benefits from that and the miles. Yeah. The, yeah, the best part about the Delta Reserve, what I what I love about it is just the, the MQM bonuses. So. And that's the medallion qualifying miles. So you can get status bonuses through that, right? Yeah. So if you hit the... The 30 case men and the 60 case men, it'll give you the give you the 15k boost on the Delta Reserve, and then for per 30,000. Then if you're on the, the Platinum, it's only 10,000 for the same. But nice, um, yeah. So now that locked me in for for Delta Platinum for all next year. So. Oh, good, good. So you're able to get that before the end of the calendar year, as we're recording here towards the end of November. So you're getting in the spend, getting these yearly goals. Any other goals to knock out before the year ends? Or are you pretty um, good just here? For, just for fun, I'm trying to knock out 30 stays to get to re-hit Hilton Diamond just, just for the heck of it, even though I have the Hilton Spire. <laughs> Maybe there's another miles. <clears throat> yeah. Maybe there's another milestone bonus with that too. Yeah, so I, I'll get some extra points. But I think more importantly, this year I added Hilton Diamond on the past just from organically staying. Oh, nice, nice, Hilton. But um, that I felt they were treating me a lot better. But this year, I don't know if it's just because I've been having a great experience and haven't been bonvoyed at Marriott. But <laughs> I've had like twenty, twenty-five stays um, with Hilton, and I haven't had a single upgrade. Nice, including. 
including this weekend. So. Uh, oh, uh, you haven't had an yeah, upgrade. Yeah, I have. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I have oh, maybe some running battle there. But the room quality is still pretty good. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Um, exceptional property, everything's. Nice, yeah. nice. And some of the points with the Hilton properties, maybe you'll see around 30,000 points for a stay. They'll fluctuate. Some of the rates will be a little bit higher. But for this one, that's probably a higher point. This one that you would need more points to book for, you just use the certificate. So you got the good value out of that. Yes. And we're talking multiple credit cards. I think that the average consumer, everyday Joe kind of person, they just think, oh, well, I just need one credit card. I'll get my 5% back on gas at Sam's Club. And I won't even use a credit card. I'll just use debit and cash for everything. But we've obviously taken a much different perspective on things. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I was about to say, um, if you didn't say it, just, I meet a lot of people, especially my age, I'm on the younger side. I'm only 22 where the, if they have a credit card, it's only for like emergency purpose. Mm -hmm. Everything's all, all debit or all Venmo or cash app and all that. Very sad. Very sad. (laughs) I'm thinking just, you know, I would, I would have, I I don't know if I'd have the 20 credit cards I'd have now if they didn't have any rewards, but I would definitely still have one just for the credit building and everything that's done for my life up to this point with that. So. Yeah. And that's a good point. Not only the rewards, but you can build credit. So if you happen to finance a house or a car or something in the future, there's definitely a benefit in that. Yeah, yeah, way to great way to show financial responsibility with no. Yeah, and a lot of zero percent APR features on cards, purchase protection. Whereas I've heard so many horror stories of people saying, "I lost my debit card and someone drained the account, and now I have to resolve this issue with the bank, and it's probably going to take a month, and then I have these overdraft fees, and they don't have any money to work for." But I know, especially with American Express, if there's any fraudulent activity, we can just call in and say, "Hey." What's this transaction going on here in Oklahoma? I I wasn't there. I don't know what's going on. And we're not responsible for that. They'll look into it and rule in our favor, I'm sure. Yeah, that's one of my favorite parts, not just Amex in general. When you call them up, they're the direct bank. You don't have any third party any, any third party issues at all in communication, they directly take care of you. I know that happened to me once or twice. It wasn't like a fraudulent charge, but just the vendor was double charging me, stuff like that. And they... They take care of it immediately. Good, good. And what led you to do all this? How did you find out about the credit card space and sign up for all these cards over time? Uh, from getting like really serious. So first started with through my family, actually. So my, my father, he owns his own business and the main, the main manufacturers that he buys product from to resell, um, they all take credit cards. So from ever since I was young as I can remember, he's been using cards as favor. He has a Delta Reserve and the business. Oh, nice. nice. So <laughs> he's doing it too. Yeah. So he, so he puts every dollar he can on Delta. I've been trying to switch him to get to the, the business plan on which he just, just did and got a hundred thousand sign up. But, nice. but through him seeing that and, um, I've gone, been fortunate to go on a lot of trips and it's all, all been paid for from points and hotel stays and va- vouchers and that sort. So when I, when I got time to be to turn 18, I went down to Bank of America. That's who I've been banking with and got direct deposits with and such. And then I thought that'd be a good place to go since they were the only one that knew more information on me than just applying on a blank application. And then um, since they saw I had the deposits and stuff, I was able to get the cash rewards card. It wasn't secured or anything about a month after I turned 18. And then and then ever since then, just had a lot of fun. Good. And with Bank of America, I, I try to get a business card with them and they say, oh, you have to open a certificate of deposit to fund the card. But even then, I thought that was a very good investment. You want to build a relationship with many of these banks. But now we, we wouldn't really recommend Bank of America's first option. You are the Amex king after all. So you, you would probably go with Amex for yeah. uh, many people. Yeah. Yeah. Bank of America is certainly not the best. It's a pretty decent option if you're looking for cash back, especially if you're platinum Bank of America preferred rewards member mm-hmm. but if you're not keeping a hundred thousand dollars and make it america and you're not in a cash back which you shouldn't be then you know there's a lot better options yeah i think we're getting much better value from the travel rewards the travel credit cards as we're both in the travel explore click community and he's always talking travel cards i i don't want the cash back i'm getting more value from this and say okay let's sign up for the delta business platinum we're getting eighty thousand miles as a sign up bonus as this introductory offer versus maybe like $300, $250 cash back. Those sign-up bonuses usually aren't so big and they're not as worthwhile. Yeah, yeah. Even sometimes not even 
as much as that. I know yesterday I, I got a screw in my tire and they were trying to push me on a cart there where it was <laughs> spend 500, get, get 50 back. On, oh, on terrible. Sign up on, and I don't, it didn't even have any cash back or anything, just special financing. I was big O tires, but, um, <laughs> but yeah, it just, yeah, travel, travel cards are the, are the way to go. I hear that a lot where people say, oh, I'm looking for a credit card for that emergency situation, as you mentioned earlier, or the financing, but why not get the financing and the sign-up bonus and the perks? Like the Blue Business Plus, I think is a very solid option for lots of people with American Express. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. There's a lot, um, a lot of versatility, especially if you're one willing to create your own small business. Right. People, oh, well, look, I do all this shopping at Kohl's, so maybe I should get the Kohl's card. But I say, no, that's exactly the wrong way to go about things. Uh, that's not your best option for that. You can go with many American Express cards, particularly the, the business ones that won't even appear on your personal report. And I think that's one of the big strengths of American Express that you can apply for so many cards with them as they're pretty lenient with approvals. Yeah, yeah, it's especially helpful once you're once you apply and once you already establish that relationship that they're not going to give you a hard pull. Right. At some point, we're going to run into too many recent inquiries if we're applying with other banks, but with American Express, yes, you establish that relationship, and there are a little bit of rules of two credit cards in ninety days, but the charge cards are on different timers. And over time, you can get your five credit cards and then multiple charge cards. Yeah. Yeah. I've been definitely running into that problem. And I have now with Amex. I know just in the past month, I got denied just on inquiries, just from the city, um, the city rewards plus card, mm -hmm. the one that rounds up the rounds up to the nearest 10. And then the flex perks card that you're interested in. Yeah. I, I got to, denied for that. Oh, well. they're strict. And then, <laughs> and then even, um, Bank of America, before I, I had a more established credit and could get, get better cards, I was sticking with them. And then I applied for their travel one, the one that's $100. And I got to die too, just for, yeah. you know, take a break, break for a while. But that's definitely another plus is you don't have to worry about that. Right. And you'll always be able to work on a sign-up bonus, or at least in the early to mid-game here with credit cards with American Express. As now there is, we're recording again in November of 2019, an increased offer on the Business Green card, which before wasn't so great, as now they're waiving the first year annual fee and you're getting a sign-up bonus on it. And the Blue Business Plus, as I mentioned, currently has a pretty good offer. And there's even the Blue Business Cash, which isn't so bad to diversify for people maybe who aren't traveling as much. They're wanting some sort of cash option. And with that, it's a $500 bonus for 10000 in spend and then 2% on everything. So not horrible. Definitely not as good as some of the travel cards, but perhaps different people with different priorities. There's something for everyone. Yeah, certainly a lot better than Capital One MasterCard. <laughs> and with American Express, you can also get the Charles Schwab Platinum card and convert your points, right? Yeah. Yeah, I can convert them out to the 1.25. That's something I'm contemplating right now. So I'm um, fortunate enough to still piggyback off my family's points to where um, I'm thinking I might just cash mine out and either just take it as cash or invest it. And then I think a lot of ways that, that Schwab is good because you take your 1.25 and say you earn that on, on your four times on dining or five times on airfare with your other American Express cards, the platinum and the gold. Then you invest that over time and look what, look what the real returns you're, you're getting out of that. So yeah. If you're not interested in travel. Right. Even if you throw it into Vanguard or some sort of good index fund, you could still get perhaps an 8% return on that and you get the compounding interest. So a lot of options for people and even with other issuers converting the points to cash in some ways, it can make sense to diversify as some people might worry about being points rich and cash broke. <laughs> yeah. But for many, I would assume that they're having some sort of full-time job or they're self-employed so they could use the travel points to get more value compared to cash that they're already making. Yeah, that, I would definitely... Definitely agree with that. Um, squeezing every little way you can to again to get that next trip. Definitely important. The one thing I wish American Express would do that I like the Chase especially is where you can you can use your cash back and then turn them into their into their points currency. I wish American Express would do that as well. So something like the that business cash card you were talking about or any of the other ones that blue cash preferred, they could be a lot better options than somebody like you and I just disregarding them for the most part just because they are cash back. Yeah, and a lot of the personal cards that have the small offers, what it's like the cash magnet, and I, I'm not even looking at those because I'm just seeing the other cards as being far more valuable. Yeah, other than the, yeah, other than the sign up. Yeah, they might be interested if they didn't have the, the hard five card limit, but. 
Right. And over time, when some of these cards reach the one year mark, then we can go ahead and cancel those downgrade product change. Some people worry about that, especially with the annual fee is, oh, well, I'm signing up for the platinum and I can, the personal platinum and I can see the benefits in year one, but will I want to pay the annual fee and keep it? Some people worry about that. What would you have to say for them? I'd say you definitely have a lot of options. There's a lot of versatility. You're definitely not stuck. You know, if you're thinking you're applying to a card, 450 like the Chase Half Hour Reserve or 550 like the Amex Platinum. You know, you definitely have options. Um, you'd have to do the math. It's always for you. Somebody like myself, I'm going to continue to get more expected value. But if you're not traveling a lot, you definitely have options on American Express. So you can transfer any of the any of the charge cards, not have any issues. And then... Um, with the chase, you know, you have a lot more, a lot more options, but just to keep that trade line open, um, is definitely important as well. So you can always transfer it back up at a, at another time if you want to as well. So say you're not traveling in year two, but maybe in year three you are, and you can always, always reverse it. Right. And with the trade lines, we're talking about existing credit that we have. So this is a good thing on our credit report that if we're opening and closing, that could have some negative consequences. Although at some point, I think that. They're diminishing returns on that, that once we have a certain amount of credit, even if we have, say, 100000 and we get rid of 5000 of it, it's not going to make that much of a difference. Definitely. And I've gotten retention offers, too, where I have the city premier card, and that's normally 95 annual fee. And I called in. I said, hey, I'm, I'm considering about whether I want to continue using the annual fee. I haven't been able to use points in the way that I would like to. There wasn't availability. And they said, well, spend a thousand a month for the next three months and we'll give you $95 statement credit and 1000 points. <laughs> so I'm more than happy with that. I can definitely put that spend in. It's not yeah, a problem. I have my city premier uh, annual fee coming up in March and I think I'm going to run the same thing. I haven't done a retention offer before, but I think that's going to be the one that I'm most interested in pursuing that. Yeah, definitely something to do rather than making this huge investment. Like I went to Hilton Grand Vacations and they were talking about buying the property ownership or the timeshare. And we're looking at this huge upfront deposit and this commitment and these maintenance fees and it's difficult to get out of. But with credit cards, we're only having to make a small investment with the annual fee. And we're definitely seeing the returns on that. Yeah. Yeah. That's funny you mentioned that about the Grand Vacations. I just signed up for that as well. I heard, I can't remember where... Um, program you were talking about that on, but um, the four nights for 200 or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a, you know, all I got to do is sit through a two hour meeting and. <laughs> yeah, and you'll even get some sandwiches, hummus, <laughs> yeah, some so, pretzels. Yeah, I did that for, for Vegas when I was booking this room on the phone. To book the Hilton Expire, <laughs> I said, if you stay on the line, we'll give you a thousand points to listen. Ooh. And so, <laughs> nice. So, with some of these things, people, oh, I don't want to make the calls. I don't want to do this. I try to multitask when doing it. I'll try to do it while I'm driving somewhere rather than just sitting at home and not doing anything else. Just uh, make these simple calls and just get along with life. Yeah. And that, that's, that's an objection I hear from some people getting started or some people who are really skeptical. Oh, it sounds like a lot of effort. I don't think that I'd want to do that. What do you have to say to those people? Yeah, I'd say you're, you're definitely wrong. There's some sort of a learning curve that comes like any hobby or any, any passion you have. But, I mean, it's it's not very difficult. You can go on the points guy's site and find out what points currency is worth in about 30 seconds, even if you, you can't remember them by yourself. It's extremely easy, especially if you're using a tr- transferable currency like a Chase Ultimate Rewards or American Express Membership Reward. I don't, I don't know how you have any excuse. You know, if you're doing something obscure or small, like a, maybe Alaska or Hawaiian Air where they don't have as many places they go to or JetBlue or something like that, then, then maybe. But if you stick with the big guys, you're not going to have any problem. Right. And it's not necessary to go big. It doesn't have to be an all or nothing project, even if you just get one card every two months, every three months, or even just say, okay, start with one, see how it goes for you, and then determine whether it makes sense to get another card. Yeah. We're talking a lot of value here. I mean, easily a sign-up bonus giving about $700, $800 worth of value, some of the benefits, and transferring the points between cards or pulling the points. There's just so much to be had. If we're spending money, why not get a big return on our spend? Yeah. Yeah. You have nothing nothing to lose if it doesn't work out or... You don't end up liking the card, you know, you can always, always cancel. A little bit of organization, keeping on top of things, of course, financial responsibility, we, we need that. 
And as you get your first card, your second card, you learn how things work. And then you want to add more and you're more comfortable with it. I'm not saying, okay, go ahead and apply for five cards right now and take on all of that. Let's start a little simpler. Yeah, bolt off one step from another, you know, start from one, get that starter card, um, go from there. And you can stop whenever whenever you feel is necessary. But Right. And a lot of information online to help guide you, as you mentioned. And we're part of the Travel Explore Click community and the WhatsApp group that he has. He has his live streams where you can ask questions, get answers. You can participate in a lot of discussion groups online. Doctor of Credit is one of my favorite websites. And of course, on my website, I have a form that listeners can complete so that they can find a card that's right for them. Because there's really, I think, no one best card for everyone. It depends on people's situations. But there certainly is a card that someone can profit from. Yeah, I would I would definitely agree. Yeah, that, that's one thing that um, it definitely depends in a lot of ways. Makes credit card specials. You can you can get one that's specific for you. You know, if you own a trucking business, you can get get a big gas multiplier card, or you go out to eat every single day. You know, you get a dining card or cash back travel. You know, there's there's always a card out there for you. I hear that from some people as well. You know, I don't know if I want want this or that, but there's always. There's always something fine that works for you. Right. And preferably a category with a sign-up bonus is I think some people go astray. They start their search saying, I'm looking for a dining card. But if you're not going to be spending a tremendous amount dining, then it's not really going to give you that much bang for your buck. But with cards like the Amex Personal Gold, we're getting a sign-up bonus of 40,000, 50,000 points and four times points on dining rather than just getting, say, the Capital One Saver card and maybe only getting a $250 sign-up bonus and 4x and the annual fee where the gold card we're getting so many more benefits i think it's one of the best in my wallet anyway yeah yeah definitely definitely use mine can't go without it you have the business gold i have both yes the business gold and the gold yeah that's something i'm looking to get in 2020 is the business gold right a, a very good card there i think not the sexiest one because there's the 250 annual fee i think it is and the 50 000 point sign up bonus and some Forex categories, it's with gas. And then there's like shipping services, I believe. Uh, dining, I'm just using it for the, the gas fills at this time. Although I'm not spending much on gas because I'm getting it free through fuel reward programs in many cases. But the sign-up bonus is really nice. And the referability, I think, is a great thing. That if you refer someone to a card, then you get 20,000 points. Yeah. And that's a really wonderful thing about American Express. Would you like to tell listeners more about the referral program? Yeah. I, I mean, I can't think about how much I've made in the past six months. I've maxed out the American Express for sure at 55000 And then I've done some on the Marriott as well where I'm something like my platinum card gets paid for literally just by spreading the word about something you would, you would talk about to your friends anyway, friends or family or people in the WhatsApp group or, or anywhere online yeah it's definitely definitely nice and fortunately they do cap it but you know something's better than, than nothing yeah and capped per card so with so many amex cards that i have i can use different cards to refer from and it doesn't matter what card people are signing up for although with some cards like the hilton card and the bonvoy cards there's some you can't refer from aspire to maybe some other cards that the business platinum would allow you to but it's very generous and with other banks they don't have that I know with Chase, it's, oh, you can refer from World of Hyatt to World of Hyatt, but that's about it. Or you could refer from the Chase Sapphire Preferred to the Chase Sapphire Preferred, but they can't sign up for the World of Hyatt card from your Preferred. And some banks just don't even have referrals at all, which I think is really wild. <laughs> Why wouldn't they want more customers and give us some incentive to sort of be independent contractors and yeah. spreading the word, right? Yeah, that's yeah, that's exactly. Well, I don't know why, yeah exactly why any bank would do that or why Chase does what they they do in that because it doesn't cost them much to give out some points. You know, their they're actual, what that cost them is nothing compared to what we get out of it to where uh, I don't know why they're not just handing them out to everybody. But. Yeah, it's a nice thing because I have the business platinum with American Express, but I'm not going to recommend that to many people, especially as their first card because of the high spend goal, the higher annual fee. It's like start small. So if I refer from the business platinum and they sign up for maybe the Blue Business Plus, a good starter card, I think that that's a good business model for American Express. Yeah, yeah, that Blue Business Plus is exceptional. I got that's on my radar for 2020 as well. I'll get that 2x on everything up to 50,000. You know, you can't 
can't go without it. Uh, the only downside I wish is it was a charge car, charge card as well, but can't be perfect in every way. Yeah, just the five credit card slots. And I think it's bad for business. Some businesses just not accepting American Express. You were posting about how you just walk out or you don't even give them business. Yeah, yeah. Unless it's a do or die situation like car repair or, you know, you're stranded somewhere, then I, I definitely, you know, I don't little mom and pop shops are the only place. Or I find that a little Asian family owned restaurants, that's my number one only problem. <laughs> if I don't see the thing and ask them, then, you know, I'd rather have my 4X on, on Mer- uh, Amex Gold than 5X on City Prestige mm-hmm. um, any day. But yeah, it does, hasn't been too much of a, too much of an issue, but they are, they are adding a tremendous amount. And, they're having more and more campaigns. I know they've added like 1.8 million <laughs> yeah. merchants in the past year. And then you just saw last week, they're giving more and more um, monetary, what do you call it? Monetary sign up bonuses for the businesses themselves. Incentives. Yeah. Incentives. Let's not call them bribes. <laughs> yeah, incentives. Yeah. That was the word I was looking for. Um, yeah. Looking for but. Yeah, Costco was a, a terrible place as they're all the accepting Visa cards and they're pitching the terrible city Costco Visa card at one time where I saw a bucket was a sign up bonus. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, that's that's not a, that's not a good good card at all. I mean, unless you're you have like a huge family and you got to go to Costco all the time because it does have a membership but I don't know why you get that just in yeah, no, no sign-up bonus, and maybe it's three percent back at Costco, but the uh, the opportunity cost is really serious there. Yeah, I think it's only two percent. The only decent- oh, even worse. <laughs> yeah, so you could get that just with double cash. Yeah, yeah. Any any basic card, but it does have the four percent on gas, which is okay. But you don't get the bonus, or you could get way more value. Yeah, I'll take four X MR from the business gold card, and yeah. many other cards that are giving a good category too. Yeah, with with Costco, it, it was it was really wild. I guess they're getting some sort of incentive to pitch the card, and they're getting commissions or something if customers sign up for it. And the woman at the desk was just really uh, getting into it with me, which was interesting. And she was taking shots at I had the the Chase Sapphire preferred and saying, but. On this card, you can get unlimited cash back. And I said, well, I can get unlimited points on this card. It was really, really bizarre. Yeah. I, I couldn't use Amex to sign up for their membership. I had a Groupon deal that I did, and they said, oh, we need to use a Visa card for an auto renewal. But it's free. You can get the free cash back. But again, the opportunity cost is serious if we're wasting an inquiry on that card versus another card we can be getting something so much more on. Definitely true, but I think we're going to have to bend the rules a little bit this weekend. Uh, some of the cheesesteak places, I know Pat's in particular, <laughs> particular is cash only, so Uh-oh. <laughs> I made sure to go to the ATM before I went on my trip. You could use your Schwab card? Uh, yeah, I don't, fortunately I don't have one, just my normal Bank of America debit, but that's also on my... SoFi, SoFi? Yeah, no, I have oh! Fifty dollar referral. <laughs> I, haven't done that. I haven't done it either, but I need to look into that. I don't. I don't know much about it. Every time I see it, I don't look into it. But I see everybody doing it, so I need to. I think I need to get on that. How about some other ways that you've saved through credit cards? Perhaps combining certain deals. I know Amex offers. In the past year, I've gotten probably five hundred dollars um, back just on. Um, Amex offers. I know when I was heavy at first, Bank of America even had some, just using like the portals and their little offers here and there. You know, if you're going to those places anyway, you know, you might, might as well. Um, it's not going to yeah. make or break it. Yeah. Fact of saving money. That's the um, only thing that really comes to mind. Yeah. It's a nice one. I had an Amex offer for Caesars properties in Vegas, spend $200, save $40. So there's 20% off right there. And I stacked that with my diamond status with Caesars. So I didn't have to pay the resort fee. I booked the reservation. I used my Amex card, of course, and then got the 40 off. So it was only about $20 a night. And I got that status through the Aspire card with the status matching. So a lot of things adding and giving a lot of benefit, whereas most people would have to say play roulette and blackjack for hours in a losing game just to get status where we can just sign up for a credit card in a winning game. And yeah. get those benefits. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I know an, another offer I just signed up for um, only came up on my MX green card. I'm going to buy some holiday gift cards for people spend three hundred dollars, um, get three thousand membership rewards. So buy some buy some gift cards for some people for Christmas. But nice. 
Any other statuses that you've gotten through credit cards? Through credit cards. What no. about your Marriott stays? Yeah, so Marriott, um, I guess I got, I started off Marriott. So I was with Hilton and, um, for a couple of years and then just a lot of point stays over the years with my family. So it was, I thought it was time. I was getting, getting tired of especially Hampton Inns. I've never been to one that I, that I love, but, um, just too many, too many of those. So I thought I'd make the switch to Marriott. Um, that's when they were, I heard about them more and more when they're talking about when they were combining, um, this past February when they made it official. But honestly, I mean, I signed up and I got the Hilton Aspire, but uh, the Hilton Aspire and just knowing that anybody with a good credit score and $450 could have the same exact status that, <laughs> that I did for putting in the hard work and sending, um, 60 nights really put a bad taste in my mouth. So I thought I'd, I'd let it go to Marriott. So I signed up for the Bonvoy Brilliant card. Um, I already had an Amex Platinum, but so both of those gave me, gave me gold status. And so it gave me a nice boost to start. And so 2019, I um, started off with that. And then I'm at a, like 172 nights, I believe now for this wow. year yeah. on Marriott and um, was lucky enough August to hit ambassador status. So Great. Um, and mostly through points, right? No, mainly just cash for, for work, work expenses, work, work appointments. But yeah, I haven't honestly used any of my Marriott points yet. Oh, okay. And just by my normal spend, I, I just hit 700,000 last week. So And a lot of multipliers on the card too for the Marriott stays. Yeah. Yeah. Six X on everything. And then I'm, with my status, I'm getting 22 and a half points per dollar. So Wow. Yeah, that's a really big stack there. Yeah, you can't can't beat that. And Amex um, was fortunate enough as well. One of the day I turned hit ambassador, they, I, um, I only had a $3,100 limit to start out with my Bonvoy Brilliant. I don't know why it was so low, but once I hit ambassador the same day, they let me know. They sent me an email that they were raising it up to 11000 Oh, nice. So, that's a good benefit there. Uh, so now I don't have to worry about paying it off it off so often but the ambassador status has been been wonderful i know a lot of people have been bond void and <laughs> a lot of different um scenarios and i look on like the site and i see facebook groups and stuff and you know honestly i've never had even close to even one issue and my ambassador has been been great every time I had there i know i was having a stay on a friend's birthday and they made sure i got a sweet upgrade and give us a little note thank you for your status and every time i call them up lady answers knows immediately it's me Oh, nice. It's been the best thing ever. Oh, great. So they have a concierge service then? Yeah. Yeah, concierge. So it's personal concierge you get assigned to. And then um, nice perk as well. Um, So something um, I used a couple weeks ago when I was going to New York City. I had a red-eye flight um, the other year, year 24 stat or year 24 so you can check in at any time you'd like and then you get a uh, full 24 hours to stay so on that one um i had work appointments all day and then um, i checked it at 8 p.m and then i had a 9 p.m the following night and then so i was able to just hang out all that hang out there until i needed to get to my flight um chill time in a, in a city that is at home Oh, that's good. And a lot of Delta flights, what have you received from the status with Delta or how has the first class experience been? Um, First class has been um, great. Exceptionally happy. We're traveling on the East Coast most of the time for a vacation. I live on the West Coast. so Most of the time I can find Delta One availability. So business class, lay down flat seat, nice meals, um, everything of that sort. But just from actual upgrades, this year I was gold. I was gifted gold by by a diamond member or one of their one of their choice benefits um and then from there i would say out of the 75 segments i have probably 70 i was at least upgraded to comfort plus oh nice and then um probably out of that probably 20 or so i was upgraded to first class just with gold and then um now with the platinum on the um couple flights i've had just shortly after booking automatically to comfort plus and then about half of those have gone gone to first class so it's been it definitely made the difference. I can't say enough good things about Delta through Flu United most of the time before that, and then just made made the switch to them. Um, I grew up in Seattle, one of Delta's bigger hubs, and um, once once my family did that, you know, it was just a, I'd say a ten times better experience in every way. Not just from availability, but being a hub city, but just the just the way they treat you, the way they talk to you on the phone, that the bag comes a lot faster. Just just everything. Nice. And also the Sky Club access. Whereas when I'm flying Delta, I'm intentionally positioning myself to take the Sky Club rather than go to a different airport and then just have to wait in the airport and not have as many options. I think it was the Detroit is the flagship location, right? Yeah. For, for the Delta. Yeah. Yeah. Detroit. And then, um, 
like JFK in Atlanta. Yes, I know in JFK in Atlanta they actually have outdoor terraces that they're open in the summer that you can. Nice. Uh, yeah, you can't. I can't say enough things about the Sky Club as well. I would say they're definitely better than any priority pass lounge I've ever been to. Um, you don't have to have a hassle about. I know in a lot of priority pass lounges, you, you only have access between these hours. And granted, with the priority pass, you can bring guests in, but most of the time I'm traveling solo or with other people that have Sky Club access. Yeah, it's been great. Um, I know in Seattle, I don't know about the other ones, well, all the ones you've been doing, you've been to Raleigh and mm-hmm. Detroit and such. In Seattle, they always have full, um, full meals they have there. So they have a local um, Pacific Northwest chain um, called Ivers, which is like a... Um, fish and chips and clam chowder, especially. So they always have the clam chowder there from the local chain. They always have some sort of chicken dish and stuff as well. But yeah, I would say Delta Sky Club for the most part. I've I even had um, better luck than even the Centurion Lounge. Everybody seems to love. Yeah, and sometimes the Centurion Lounge is really crowded. I haven't seen that with the Delta Sky Club. And certainly with the Priority Pass lounges, I see the signs, oh, filled to capacity, you have to come back in 30 minutes or join a line. And yeah. sometimes there's not enough time between flights and you miss out on that. Yeah, that, that yeah, that's something that's a problem. And I was, even though I have a Del- Delta Reserve, I was I was extremely disappointed when, when they announced that with their new revamp with their Delta cards, that it was going to have access to the Centurion Lounge as well. And I was thinking, you know, every time I've ever been there, it's already too crowded. Like, mm-hmm. you need to figure out how to kick more people out, not let... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot of everybody and everybody just has status and nobody has status, right? Yeah. Yeah, I know the only time I've ever had a crowded issue problem was has been in Salt Lake City, um, which isn't their biggest club or flagship there. But that's only because they're, they're constructing a new one and so they're about half size. But I haven't had any, any issue at all. Full full open bar if you want. It's such a blessing, you know, you always, once you get used to the lounge, you know, you can't, you can't go without it. Now your purpose, everybody always likes to get there an hour early, you know, get there as late as you can and yeah. rush to the gate and don't want to stand around. But now, you know, like last night, my flight was at midnight and I got to the airport at 9 p.m. and watched the, the new Tesla unveil and just chilled out, had some dinner. Just a nice, relaxing evening. Can't say enough good things about that lounge experience. Yeah, yeah, you're in the terminal and you're all these announcements and the hustle and bustle and maybe you have to pay like $20 for food at Earl of Sandwich and maybe it's like $5 for a water bottle and it's just really expensive out there. So these lounge visits, some of these benefits, they really add over time and really give you a great return. Yeah, and the seats are a lot more comfortable. You got more room. There's no lines for the food, even if you're willing to pay an extreme overpriced amount for what they're offering. You still have, you still have to wait in long lines. Great. Any applications that are coming up on your end? You've mentioned some that you'd like in 2020. I, I am a big fan of the U.S. Bank Altitude Reserve. Um, I'm not a big bank sign-up bonus kind of person to start a relationship with them. So I've been trying to get the flux perks, but I think my goal, you know, being my self-proclaimed MX King yeah, yeah. Um, is I'm going to go at a more run for even stuff like the plum card with the referral bonus mm-hmm. and the um, business gold, um, even the business green if it has a good offer at the time. The, I've been saving my fifth slot for the for the blue business plus credit card. I can't think of what, what else. And then if they ever come out with that rumor about that in between between the platinum and the centurion is mm-hmm. real, um, I'd definitely be be interested in that so american express if you're listening <laughs> um, just give me a centurion i'll, I'll give you the ten thousand dollars <laughs> today let me know yeah the optio i think is the yeah. uh, in-between card hopefully the math on that will work out yeah yeah so hopefully that's a that's a good card but who knows if that uh, that'll come out but i'm right now i'm, I'm just happy with what i have mainly daily drivers um general spend right now i've been using everyday preferred and gasoline so uh, making sure I get my 30 transactions a month. Yeah. So 1.5 MR, which is not the greatest, but um, still still get enough return. And then three times on gas, which is not um, terrible. And then um, platinum 5X on airfare, mm-hmm. um, personal gold 4X. And then, and then I'm glad that even 4X on Uber Eats with that. And then my, my new favorite, I've been using extreme amount on um, my Uber, Uber a lot, is my new Amex green card. So. Mm-hmm. I was able to get that. Unfortunately, I jumped the gun and I was, saw the link. I was just looking on the Amex website, paying, paying off some stuff, and it said it was live. It was like 1.30 in the morning <laughs> Pacific time. 
And one of the day it came out, and I applied immediately for the thirty thousand, only to find like doctor credit links like an hour later saying going incognito for forty five thousand. Ah. <laughs> so that was disappointing, but I jumped the gun. But that's what I that's what I get for for not waiting. So I'm I'm just waiting um, here any day. I'm assuming um, away luggage is going to have either a Black Friday sale or a Cyber yeah, Friday. Yeah, there you go. There's the benefit of waiting. And I'm going to use my my hundred dollar credit on that. I'm looking looking to get one of their their metal suitcases. Right, one of the welcome offers on the refresh of the green card. Sure. Yeah. So use that use that credit and then um i clear i don't know if you have clear but no i didn't get that um clear has been um one of the best things i've signed up for so before i knew that global entry and i before i even had credit cards i had um, tsa pre-check and then when i got that that changed everything just saving the line you don't have to take off your shoes um i know i always i'm a big electronics fan so always having like two computers or tablet you don't have to take Mm -hmm. anything like that out when i got clear probably six months ago i just changed everything even more now you don't even have to take your id out of your pocket you just give them your biometrics yeah and then you just and then with that the clear line is always shorter and then you if you have pre-check you can have clear without pre-check so if you have clear and pre-check you do the clear and then you just cut in front of everybody in the pre-check line um it's been definitely worth it so to have it from now on for free um with the mx green is going to be for twenty dollars going to be great yeah i i Got the green a while back when it was 25000 so that was something I missed out on too. But eh, you never know. I mean, we can't stand by and wait forever for possible offers to come out. It's where I hear that people just haven't gotten cards in a very long time. It's, well, get something. Work on a bonus. Work on a goal. Get some other cards. Build that credit, right? Yeah, you know, one thing I forgot to mention though is that I know everybody's been pushing with this new. They're talking about, you know, if you have United, you sign up for United or Delta just as a member, you get a discount on Clear. And I was inside the the Sky Club Lounge in Atlanta, in their, in their flagship one, and they had a Clear desk, like a Clear sign up desk. And so I went there, um, and I just assumed I was going to get the discount, and but they didn't. They didn't. Oh. <laughs> and I just said like, here's my. Here's my card, you know, and then when I got the statement, it was like 180 or whatever. Ah. It was like, it got me, but I don't know why they, they weren't given the discount at their own home lounge, but... Yeah, really bizarre, right? But it wasn't the end of the world. Yeah, and sometimes we could try to rectify these things. Calling in, asking, say, hey, I saw this charge, but I was anticipating a discount, but unfortunately, it doesn't always work out. Yeah. But even with some blunders, even with some mistakes, I think we're still well up with all the rewards. It's just not even close. I, I've been keeping track of some gains on my end versus some costs and some mishaps and things that didn't work out as I intended. It's just a matter of taking calculated risks and just being prudent and yeah, looking into the information, as you said, and trying to make the best moves possible. Yeah, that's um, great. Yeah, I, I just, I got bored about a week ago and actually counted up all the rewards and everything I got and used like what the points are worth and stuff. I haven't redeemed most of them, but ne- I've netted like my annual fees are about 4000 and then um, I've got about $25,000, 25000 worth of worth of value um, with Hilton and stuff. It just, just for stuff I would normally, normally do, you know? Yeah. That, um, how much, how much value is there is just, just incredible. Yeah, and even adding, or even if you considered things like the breakfast, whereas normally maybe you'd be spending ten or fifteen dollars for a small breakfast, but when you get this big buffet and many of these properties, a restaurant that made to order, omelet station, you get all the oatmeal, the fruits, everything that's there. It's it's really nice stuff. I'm not putting in the spreadsheet, oh, ten dollars, fifteen dollars saved, but I certainly could, and that, that really adds up over time. Yeah, and even if you no one normally do breakfast or you skip it you know it's always always a nice way to start your day you feel good just stuff like that it's all the little things that seem seem to add up as well hilton and all the other ones you know free bottles of water yeah yeah here and there, here and there you know wave resort fees and all that sort you know there's a lot of ways to get a lot of value for not a lot of hard work and good peace of mind in the credit card hobby too because i hear people they have these emergency situations where maybe a family member had some medical incident and well i'd like to see them and people are in this bind of well i don't really have the thousand dollars to pay for a flight right now but with us i mean we have so many points that we can pretty much do what we want and just go and travel and have this flexibility and freedom that comes with credit cards yeah yeah i haven't heard of that from anybody but i could see how that can make make a world of difference you know if you're living paycheck to paycheck or are close to it you know it's hard to shell out 
uh, money like that. But if you just have the points saved up, you know, that can make all the difference. And it seems a lot of times you don't get screwed if it's a you're booking really close to the day of departure with the points as much as you do on a on a cash booking. Yeah. And especially for those, I think, who are working some pretty low paying jobs that they don't like, I think the incentive is definitely there for them. Whereas think about how you're spending your time. If you're making $10, $15 an hour at a job you don't like and say, take that time to go into a bank, get a checking account bonus, sign up for a credit card, manage the account, the return on your time is going to be extremely beneficial for you. Yeah. Yeah. You could even make more money and then you could spend that extra time reading books or taking online courses or whatever to better yourself in a position to get yourself more value to get out of that situation. But yeah, there's a lot of little a lot of little ways like that. Um, I like what personally like what you're doing where you're staying away from the traditional employment like that. Just making creating your own destiny on stuff like that. That's pretty fascinating. Yeah, thanks. And definitely made possible through the world of credit card rewards and deals. So there's really a lot that can be done. Just put time and effort into it and hopefully get a good return and take these calculated risks, I think. Um, free, yeah, there's a lot of, a lot of work for freedom, but it's definitely, definitely work it. I would yeah, say stay away from your, your dead-end job. Do what you can. There's little stuff like this, you know. Start small and definitely can multiply into something big. Great. All right. Anything else that you'd like to share with listeners? Just keep on, keep on applying and keep on using American Express, everybody. <laughs> All right. And where can people find you online? How can they reach you? Um, you can, the best way to reach me, um, just on the, on my channel, on YouTube channel, um, David Amex King Moss. So I've been uploading semi-frequently. When I do upload, I upload about four or five videos in one day. So one of those will be coming soon, but lots of topics and some comedy videos in there as well. So. <laughs> some destruction of cards and uh, other taking shots. Yeah, yeah. I destroyed my Chase Sapphire Reserve and bit me in the ass and I got a splinter, <laughs> metal splinter in my hand. It took me about 10 days or so to finally get it out. A lot of pain that endured with that. It definitely wasn't worth it. And it took about over two weeks for Chase to give me the replacement card too, which I thought was thought was weird but are they watching the youtube (laughs) like "Ah, i don't know about Uh, this guy i just paid him my annual fee last week so (laughs) and uh email if people want to reach out to you through there yeah you can email me my email is uh, dmoss d-m-o-s-s 253 at gmail.com if you have any problems with american express or um, any questions or anything i'd be more than happy to happy to help you all right very good thanks for your time today thanks for having me yeah Thanks for listening and stay tuned for more content. Visit my website at hurdygurdytravelpodcast.com where you can read episode transcripts, complete a free credit card questionnaire to receive tailored recommendations, view helpful resources, listen to past episodes, and contact me. Support my work through Patreon, PayPal, the Cash App, and referral links by visiting the Donate tab on my website. Subscribe on YouTube, like on Facebook, Follow on Twitter and follow on Instagram, searching for me, Justin Vakula, and Hurdy Gurdy Travel Podcast. Visit my other podcast at StoicSolutionsPodcast.com, where you can find practical wisdom for everyday life inspired by the ancient philosophers of Greece and Rome. Thanks to generous patrons and fans of this podcast who help support my work. Have a great day.